Hi, good evening. This is Bud Rebel from the Bud Rebel Show, and I'm on it tonight to interview a man named Gilbert Soso. Gilbert Soso is a very, very talented young man. Gilbert, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, Bud. Thank you so much for having me. Um, by the way, it's Sosa, like salsa almost. <laughs> oh, got that. Okay, a little salsa salsa. Oh, I got it. No problem. <laughs> So I'm a filmmaker and I'm a content creator. Um, I've been doing it right now for around five years, which is really crazy to say. And well, I'm really happy to be here and I love talking to other creative people. So I mean, that's, that's pretty much how I go about my day to day. That's great. Filmmaker yeah. and creating content. <laughs> that's it. You got to have a lot of fun with this stuff. Question for you. Did you watch a Daytona 500 this weekend? I missed it. I need to. I need oh, to watch right, it. Right, I need to watch right, it. I need to watch it. Sorry, the hat's coming off. See that? We're putting on the other hat now. Oh, honestly, uh, that's your fault. You I, I didn't watching, notice it, so that's great. That's it. If you watch it, I could wear the other hat. That's it. It was a great race, by the way. You have to watch the recap. Next question. This is really deep. I want you to think about this, okay? I know you're. Very I promise big, I will. I promise I will. Yeah. You're I a promise very, I will. Very big influencer. You're a person that really knows what's up. So here we go. I have a choice right now. One of these cookies I'm going to eat tonight. Shall I have the Malamars? Should I have the farmhouse thin chocolate dark? Or should I go with the more healthier Newtons whole grain fig? I need to know what am I going to have after this interview and why? A lot of pressure. I know. Ah, uh, I feel. I feel like it's the last one because they're a lot more healthier. And also because really? I feel like during the week, I feel like, <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know. Personally, like during the week, I tend to have like the more healthier stuff. And then on the weekends, I'll just splurge, you know? So it's like, I know it's, it's like a Monday because we had off Tuesday and I'm like, I worked all day, you know? And I'm like, should I eat something healthy? I should just say, I'm done with the day and should I eat something really bad. Just one. I'm not sure. So you say go and stay healthy, right? I'm getting a little older. I'm not a little older than you. So just go with the healthy one, huh? You would eat the fig newton over the chocolate. I chip. say you go with the healthy one. All right. Now, but if you're on a desert island and you could have only one cookie of these three, which one do you have chosen? The second one. I because I've never had it. I've had the wait, first wait, one wait. and I haven't had the third one, but the third one sounds healthy. Wait, you never had a Malamar? I haven't. Oh my gosh, you better. Get, yeah, I know. I, I that's that, that's you've been deprived, my friend. I don't get that. It's like Malibu's are like, oh, I, I feel so sad. This is like the chocolate and marshmallow and dark chocolate. Now, when you get one, if you really want it to be special, put it in the microwave for 20 seconds and you are in heaven. In heaven. So, Gilbert, tell me how this all started. I think you started out some Episcopal high school. And you, you met somebody who's a little different politically than me there. <laughs> and that's what else. Tell me a little about what happened there, please. Okay. So I guess to make it like more, a more, a more like, a more like summarized story. So when I graduated high school, Episcopal high school, I drove out to LA like two weeks afterwards. And I was like, I'm going to go do this LA thing and I'm going to figure it out when I get there. I saved, a, I put away like a stash of money for like the last few months of my senior year. I was working like a, like double shifts and everything. And then when I got to LA, um, I got there like during like the gold rush, you could say of like the, the first wave of social media where like everything that's happening right now, it's kind of like everything that at that time, what we were expecting to see. And at that time, um, I was hanging around this building that everybody knows, I feel like, well, I don't even know if they still know about it because we're in a such different wave of social media. It was called 1600 Vine. And when I was hanging out, hanging out at 1600 Vine, I was work, I was collaborating with like, with like models and stuff like that. I was like, I was like shooting their photos in exchange for like, um, in exchange for like promotion on social media, they would get like my photos like taken of them, you know? So they would be like free content. So like that would get me through the door with a lot of people that were just looking to get content. And at that time, it was very rare for photographers to like work with people who weren't models. I'm oh, sorry, where that weren't like, that were just creators um, just for the sake of like social media. Like Trader Photos always existed, but it was more for like portfolio purposes. This was definitely not for portfolio purposes. It was like for content creation for social media. 
And eventually I came across this one person that was like, hey, you should hit up this one guy um, called Jake Paul. He's starting a company um, in, and he, he just moved to a house in West Hollywood. And so I did. And then a, a few days later, I found myself um, getting hired uh, to be an intern um, for Jake and his company. And then from there, it kind of just spiraled into like different things um, to where like uh, a year later, I was working with all these creators and I started doing content myself on social media. And I started getting into the land market, into the Spanish market, because I saw like a hole in there. And I was like, let, let me see if I can, if there's an opportunity there. And once I did that, it kind of just all it kind of just all stick together. And since then, um, I did YouTube full time for like two years. And then now I've been focused on like making films and kind of like using that social media presence and turning it into like, turning it into like something bigger than just like social media, you know, like more like of a, the, the goal would be down the road, a household name as a film director or as an actor too, because I'm also an actor. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much, I guess you could say like a summarized down version because it's it's just it's been five years now almost and it's to, like the way you asked me it's, it's crazy because i don't even feel like it's been five years you know everything goes so fast now and now even like a month feels like it's been a few days you know so usually so you went down here i guess about 17 years old from texas mm -hmm. i was i was 18 18 mm -hmm. so you tell you what do you tell your parents i'm going to be a, a movie star what do you tell them how do they, how do um, so here's the thing so when I went out there, I was already enrolled um, to go to UT Austin. I had a full ride to UT Austin. So I was basically just going to go for the summer. But then upon being there for like six weeks, eight weeks, everything just kind of became a lot more serious. Like literally 10 days before orientation um, that I was supposed to go back to Texas. Um, and that's when I got the offer to like stay in LA and work full time for this group of influencers, um, the company called Team 10 that eventually became a phenomenon in social media and kind of just turned into a lot of other different things that till this day we all know of, you know, in the mainstream and just social media in general. Um, and and for my parents, I mean, my mom was always very supportive since day one. It was all about like, like whatever makes you happy and like if it's going to yield resort, results, then do it. And I didn't really know like what the results are going to be, but I kind of just trusted my gut and I went with it. And eventually I actually got a gap year from UT Austin. And a year later, I still, even though I got the gap year, I still didn't go, you know? And then it was just like, it was just too good. Like I never saw, I, I guess like I, my whole high school career, I worked to like go to college to like, as we, as we, as we usually do. And like, to like be successful in that way. But for a, a spot in the entertainment industry, like a career in the entertainment industry, I just didn't see that as being like something for me because I already felt like I was so hands on that I did not need it. So I just trusted my gut. I went with it and ever since then haven't looked back. So the, when you first got down there, did, were you making a living in this industry or you were doing other stuff to make ends meet when you first got in? Was it, how, how did that work out? Well, so that's, that's a crazy question. So when I first got down there, I had actually, um, I had, a, I had a few savings. I had, I had a savings for like two or three months. And then after that, um, that's when I got hired by Jake Paul and he started like, he had, he, he caught me on full time, but then I, I did that for like six months. And then from there, I kind of went on and did my own thing. And that's when things get a little bit interesting because I wasn't making any sort of living because at this time I was still behind the lens. I wasn't a content creator in front of the camera myself. I was just a person like producing behind the camera and like, and like doing the photo shoots and doing the video shoots. And in LA, it's a very competitive um, market. So a, a lot of the time, like people are like, especially cause I was 19 now, like a lot of the time you have to like undersell yourself to even like get hired for jobs, even though you're really talented because there's so much competition. So like, I wasn't making a living like the, like in the first year at all. Like there was days where like, I couldn't afford any groceries. Um, so I would go to like in and out and like eat like an in and out. And then, and then, and then like a few hours later, I'd be like working with like an influencer who has like 10 million followers or 20 million followers or whatever. So it was like extremes in one day because a lot of the time 
time when you collaborated with a lot of these creators at the day at that time like like there like there wasn't there wasn't any form of payment the form of payment was the exposure of my work my photography or whatever being seen by millions of people um so there was i they, i even reached a point like right before i started creating content in front of the camera where where i had to like live at a friend's place because i couldn't afford any rent you know it was it was really like it was really like i need to do something more like i really need to like figure this out and eventually the solution was that i started doing content myself in front of the camera aside from just behind the camera and that's kind of like what made it all like what it turned it into a different game because once i started doing that um it like like i started on i did it on youtube everything just kind of went crazy where like my friends and i had a channel and our channel like from like one month to the other gained like a million subscribers and like over 100 million views and just like and just like a few weeks you know and that's when it was like okay this is it this is this is this is what's next you know gilbert in front of the camera <laughs> amazing so like all of a sudden you go from just being your regular joe and all of a sudden you're a big celebrity i guess in the world how does that help you in the social life scene people get is it easier now to meet people now i guess you got the whole coronavirus but you know other than that it's, it's probably a little easier <laughs> to meet people right you got a lot of fan mail and stuff or fan emails and stuff so till this day I'm going to be honest with you. I personally feel like there's something going on where like nowadays, like being known on social media is not as, it is something that we're all working on, but it's only because we all like, like, like we all live on our phones. So if you want to do a business or if you want to be like some sort of entity, like you have to like, just do the social media push because, because that's how people are going to be able to keep up with you. But in general, like when I was going through this, I mean, my friends and I did like tours like around Latin America. We did like merch, like we did like 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 in public, like we would get like like we would get like 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 people following us around, like people coming to our house and knocking. So like it was definitely like really, really like it happened. It just happened so quick, honestly, that at the time you don't really ever think of like those things of like, how does it feel? You just kind of keep, you just kind of keep that mindset of like, I got to keep going. But now looking back at it, it kind of feels like it was another life. You know, it kind of feels like, like, it just feels so surreal. It doesn't feel like anything that till this day I've been able to, to kind of like, to like touch again, because it was like a moment that like, that like right when things started, that's when it was like the big boom. And now I'm working on another project like that. That's kind of like similar to that, but it's a total different game in terms of like social media wise, where like a, a lot of people on social media now are known, you know, but also it's like, what are you making? What are you known for? Because nowadays anybody can just pick up their phone and be viral if they wanted to through just an, having an iPhone. You know, it doesn't matter if you have these resources or these resources, anyone with an iPhone that has a personality um, and no how to distribute it through TikTok or whatever, YouTube, Instagram can have that kind of, can have that kind of success. So I feel like because of that, personally for me, like I go about my day, like a, like an average Joe person until this day now, but there was definitely a moment where like, you felt like very like non-human because you have so many people telling you like, you're their idol and you're their, and they're your fan and they look up to you and you feel like you have a responsibility, but I almost feel like because it's not tangible, it's very hard to like really describe what that is like, other than like the feel, other than like the feeling that I feel whenever I think about it, you know, it's just very hard to describe it. <laughs> How did you keep grounded when that happened? You didn't want to get yourself too in your head. Were the moments where you got too in your head or you honestly, or did you, were you able to keep grounded? So I'm going to be honest with you. So this has happened. This, this is something that happened between my friends and I. Um, it was like, it was like six of us. Like we all kind of like had this boom together. Definitely at the beginning, it was like, okay, we got to stay, we got to stay like, we got to stay humble. We got to stay like, like just like a month ago when none of this existed. But as time went on, um, egos definitely grow, you know, egos definitely become a thing. So around like eight months in, I definitely lost myself. Like I had no idea who I was. Like I was, I was, I was letting the people dictate who I was mm -hmm. and that kind of turned into like two years of like a a lot of like 
mental like mental like confusion that they didn't take that that I, did, that I wasn't able to sort until like a year and a half ago you know and this happened like starting in 2017 so it was something that like yeah like I, I I'm grounded now but I can tell you definitely there was a moment where like I do I didn't feel grounded and where like I didn't even notice that I was not grounded where I I was acting on this persona that like people kind of like hype for you know even though to them like it's like an entertainment but like when you're living in a real life it's kind of like you really have to be careful and you really have to be aware of your values and all that because things can get ugly really quick yeah and today and today it's very hard yeah being young and the world as it is with all these different cancel cultures and all the little things you can say when you just because you're feeling it's so hard that you say one thing wrong and all of a sudden start and falls down the line. So I, I give you a lot of credit for balancing it all out to some degree, because I can imagine the pressures. Now your videos you are generally dead, more geared to the Latin, Latin market. Is that correct? Basically, or is mm. it more, and is it more comedy I, or what? I mean, where's, what's the, what genre would you say it is? So as of the last few years, um, a lot of the videos were geared towards the Latin market specifically. But I reached a point where also um, that happened because that's where I kind of found the success without really knowing I was going to. So I kind of just ran with it. But in the last year, in the last three months specifically, I've been working on this um, next project that's going to be like more geared towards everyone, if you want to put it that way, uh, where it does revolve. It, it revolves around it revolves around a lot of storytelling and a lot of you could say some comedy um, and just entertainment in general. But. I'm a storyteller at the end of the day. I'm a filmmaker. You know, that, that's that's kind of like where I, why I even ended up in LA in the first place. And then social media just kind of happened. But now you kind of have to do all of it. So as far as content wise, for me, it's like just about telling stories in all shapes or forms, whether that's through vlogs, whether that's through a 15 second TikTok, whether that's through um, a documentary, whether that's through a short film, et cetera, or a music video, who knows? It's just for me, the, the key part is being a storyteller because at the end of the day, if it's a story that, that um, a stories are universal, you know, the language might be a barrier. But even then, nowadays, I feel like we're becoming a lot more um, trained to consume all types of content because we get to pick what types of content we consume. And it's not just like what's programmed, but what we search for and what's also thrown at us. And we just kind of decide to scroll or to stay, you know? So what's your average day like? I mean, everything's different, but like when you wake, you wake up at a certain time to create and then you have the videos and, and how many people work with you? So as of now, my average day looks like this. So usually my bedtime is at midnight and I wake up at 7 a.m. And then after waking up, I drink my first cup of coffee. And then from my first cup of coffee, I turn on the music um, just to kind of get me in the mood. From there, I go to my computer. I check my email, I check in with my manager. And then from there, um, I start thinking of all the reach outs I have to do for the day. Um, I usually make my calendar also the day before. Um, and then for some certain things, I'll do it like a week before, but never like only benchmarks, never like specifically. Um, specifically, I like to go day by day. I like to focus on the present. Um, after doing so on a content day, usually like towards noon, we'll start creating content. I'm Right now, I'm working with a group of people um, in um, where I am in Houston um, to start creating content. So we've been like having conversations. We're starting to shoot content, to backlog content, um, whether that's YouTube, whether that's TikTok, whether that's Instagram. Um, some days I'll have a shoot. And then from there, I'll come back like in the evening um, and I'll continue my day with like any like with any like future projects that I'm working on any progress on those like right now I'm working on like a series and I'm working on, on, a, on a book and things like that that like are that need like that constant progress daily little by little and then from there I'll have my dinner um, I'll usually have my lunch at 2 p.m also by the way I forgot about that part <laughs> um, and and then from there I'll do my calls in the evening because usually I save all my calls for the evening and then from there I'll go to the gym and then from there, um, I'll just do anything that I didn't get done throughout the day, anything that requires me mostly to be on my computer um, and, the, and up till midnight, and then I'll go to bed usually. So that's usually what it looks like on like my routine days, if you want to put it that way.
Sounds pretty extensive. And how many people work with you as a, on your projects? How many on your team would you say? So, so right now that I I've been working on building like a new team because first first second. I was going more towards like the filmmaker route, but then as of a few months ago, I decided to go more on the content creator route because I was already starting to get like in the film industry with like mentors and et cetera. But then last year happened and it kind of really stalled those plans with like where I wanted to go with film. So I decided that as of now, I wanted to continue to grow um, my, my social media presence and just my content creation persona. So as of now, like as far as like the people that I'm working with, um, it should be, it's around, it's around, it's around 10 to 15 people that I'm working with that I'm constantly interacting with daily, um, with all the projects that, um, I'm taking on like day to day, week to week. It's like at least 15 people a day that I'll be talking to, um, for all those projects that like, I have to keep progressing and following up on or like, Hey, send me this. Hey, do this. Hey, we're going to do this. And that's between photographers. Um, that's between like cinematographers, my managers, um, my, my other, my, my, my other like friends are also like content creators, editors, like all those sorts of things that like you have to constantly keep in touch with because you want to keep continuing to move the vision forward day by day, because at the end of the day, it's like those small steps that kind of build up to that big leap, not like just every now and then. And I also like to have very hands-on relationships with everyone I work with, because I want to make sure that also we're all on the same page and they're, that they're also like hopefully winning in some way from whatever I'm doing or whatever I'm doing with other people. Because at the end of the day, my goal is just to build something bigger than myself. So I want everyone that's a part of my journey to also win when I win, you know? That's great. Gilbert, the final question is, where are we going to see Gilbert Soso five years from now? Five years from now, you're going to see Gilbert Sosa still on the internet because that's something that I don't think is going anywhere soon. But he's going to have a series on a streamer under his belt um, that I directed or that I um, produced one or the other or wrote and also in a series myself as an actor. So, so it's going to be one or the other. I mean, it's going to be both of them in the next five years. Yeah, but I'm going to add one other thing to you, that criteria. In the Go next for it. five years, you're going to be a lover of Malamars and you're going to be putting them in microwaves every night. <laughs> Kilbert, it's been a real pleasure having you tonight. I'm sorry, I got to pronounce your name right the second time. It's now tell me again. I'm saying it wrong. So, Sasa, Sosa, like Sosa. Uh, like Sammy Sosa. So, Sammy Sosa. Gilbert, Sasa, Sosa. <laughs> oh my God, terrible. Anyway, Gilbert, it's been great having you. All the best. Congratulations. You're amazing. We want you to wish you all the best in the upcoming years to come. And thank you for having us. Thank you for being our interviewee this week tonight. Thank you, bud. Have well, thank day. you for even considering me. I'm, I'm really happy. And thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure. Keep up the good work. I always love, I love creative people like you. Thank you.